Today I'm going to be talking about bottlenecks and how to deal with them. When you hear the term bottleneck, you probably think of traffic. Or maybe you think of an actual bottle and its narrower neck. Those are the ways you usually hear them in normal daily life. I'm going to be talking about them in the manufacturing sense. The meaning is very similar. So, first of all, what is a bottleneck? A bottleneck is the process or the processes with the lowest output in a system. Bottlenecks can cause parts to build up between processes, the work in progress areas that you normally find between stations. Bottlenecks can cause other operators to wait and be unproductive. At the highest level too, if you can't produce enough parts for the customer, you have a bottleneck. You could lose your business with the customer. And there's many more issues associated with bottlenecks, but those are some of the main ones. So say we have a production cell with three stations. The first station makes 15 parts an hour. The second station only makes 10 parts an hour. And then the third and final station also makes 15 parts an hour. What station would be the bottleneck in this production cell? The bottleneck would be the station in the middle, the process that is only outputting 10 parts an hour. Because the first and third are producing more, they're not the bottlenecks. It's the center process. It has the lowest output. If you become an industrial engineer, a process engineer, a manufacturing engineer, you're going to be dealing with bottlenecks. It's going to be your job to reduce them pretty often. Even too, as another type of engineer or as a manager, you're going to be dealing with bottlenecks. So how do you deal with a bottleneck? Well, there's a few different ways you can try. The first and most simple way that I've seen most often is just to allocate resources from other areas. You could have the employees work overtime for a little bit. You could add an employee or you could rotate when your employees take breaks just so they can cover that production. You have to be careful with these methods though. If you're going to be making the part for a long time and you have a bottleneck, you don't want to keep paying people overtime all the time. And you don't want to throw extra employees at a problem. Break rotation works decently, but that can cause issues for scheduling and it might actually irritate the operators on the line. If I couldn't take a break with my friends, I know I'd be irritated. So really, a good way to deal with a bottleneck is going to be process improvements. This is where process engineers make their money. Ways that they can improve the process to reduce the time it takes to make a part. And a reduction in time means you can get more parts in the same amount of time. So you're increasing output and you're breaking the bottleneck. That's the terminology used with bottlenecks most often you're breaking the bottleneck. You're improving production and reducing the constraint in your system. So the end result is that your bottleneck production is increased. There are also secondary bottlenecks. Secondary bottlenecks are your second worst processes in your production cells, at least in terms of output they are. So your main bottleneck has the lowest output in the entire cell the entire production line. A secondary bottleneck would have the second lowest. So say you have a scenario where your first station makes 15 parts an hour, your second 10, and your third makes 18 parts an hour. Your main bottleneck is the second station because it can only make 10 parts an hour. It has the lowest output. But say you do some process improvement and increase the production of that station. Now we have 15, 16, and 18 parts an hour. The new bottleneck is the first station because it now has the lowest output. So originally, it was the secondary bottleneck. Not the lowest output yet, but it will be if you improve the other bottleneck. So that's an introduction to bottlenecks and what exactly they mean and how to deal with them. I hope you can identify them in the future and fix them. Good luck.